Hey, and welcome back to the Power Mac Guy channel. So in this Android, awesome Android app series, I'm going to be showcasing apps that I use all the time to get things done on Android. One of my favorites and probably one of the most powerful apps is Mixplorer. In this video, I'll be doing an introduction just to show you a lot of the basic features. And then I'm gonna make some more videos to go in depth because this app has lots and lots of features. So this is the main screen you'll see uh, right now we're in internal storage. You get to see uh, relevant information like how much disk space is used, how much space uh, in total you have. So I've used 94% of my internal SD card. So we can just scroll. Um, I really like the size of the files. And I think what's really cool is like if a app created a folder, you'll get to see like an icon of which app created the folder. So like we can see that Minecraft created this folder. Then we go in here and see uh, files relevant to Minecraft. Another cool thing is every single folder, you get the nice folder icon, which is easy to tap. And then you get to see uh, when the last edit was made. So here we have a timestamp and we can actually edit um, what information is shown, but I'll be showcasing that in another video. On the side, we have the bookmarks. This honestly, I think is one of the most powerful uh, features in Mixplorer. And recently I found out that you can even create sections. So by just creating this section, uh, everything below it is going to be automatically added into the section. So when I tap this, that section is hidden. And obviously you can see how this could be very useful when you have lots and lots of bookmarks, which is something I have. Uh, so here we have some basic bookmarks created by Mixplorer. So if we go home, this is really cool because then we can see like uh, basic shortcuts to commonly used directories. So here we have internal storage. Here we have uh, the app. So this is really powerful. I didn't actually realize how powerful this was until I tried it recently. So this gives you um, a quick shortcut to all the user apps, but it actually gives you a shortcut to the internal storage. So let's go to an app that probably has something interesting, Filmmaker. Uh, so when you first see this, um, you get to see really great information on the app. You get to see the version, um, installed version I'm not sure what the difference is between those you get to see the target SDK and the minimum SDK this right here is like ridiculously uh, useful especially like when you're installing stuff you can just instantaneously know whether or not an uh, app is going to work with your system because it shows you the minimum required SDK so like this number right here five that means this particular app uh, filmmaker needs a minimum SDK of five so it can be or a minimum SDK of uh, 21L, but that means it can be installed on any Android device running Android version five. Very useful, very quick. Uh, so there's a lot of options uh, to open stuff in, which is another powerful feature of Mixplorer, but I think one of the coolest things is this Explore tab, which is specifically set up for Mixplorer. So then you can go like to the actual internal app files. So that right there is already very, very powerful. Uh, so let's go back home uh, so we've got various shortcuts I'll go more in depth into that the way the app is laid out is very useful I think we can actually um, split the pane let me see so like here's some of the yeah so we can do dual pane and landscape so this is really useful when you have a tablet I don't personally use this too much but I have found it useful like if I'm going to be doing a lot of work in between two directories having two panes is very nice this is something you see in um, file managers like total command alert and Solid Explorer. Another cool thing is tabs. Tabs in Explorer are simply excellent. So let's go to internal storage and let's go to uh, IDMP. That's another app I have and it has a bunch of folders. So uh, already you can see that we have this path structure for each tab. And what's cool is if I swipe and open another tab, uh, let's say I navigate somewhere else and I've got a, um, or let's go to a more interesting folder. Uh, let's see. I think architecture, there we go. So we've got this path structure showing up. And then if I go back to IDMP, you can see that the path structure is dependent on which tab you're in. So you can know exactly where you're at. And I can just really switch to apps, uh, tabs super quickly, which allows me to have access to a whole lot of different files at once. And you can have all kinds of tabs open. So that's really, really powerful. Um, another cool thing are the various extra features. So you have like, 
tools. You can detect duplicates and app remnants. You've got the filtering options in this app are fantastic. So like if I go into a folder, I can uh, check out, uh, set the filter to determine what I want to see. I'm going to go more into detail into that because that's really powerful. We've got servers. So one thing I found with Explorer is like in the moment, if you need a quick server to set up, it's great. But if you need something that lasts, unfortunately, Android is really aggressive at shutting down background applications. So even when I set up automations to have this start um, like over and over again, like I do with other apps, it still seems to get closed. One thing that makes this FTP server more powerful than a lot of the other apps is that Explorer gives you access to the Android uh, data and media and app folders. So if I were to set up an FTP server, I would actually be able to go into the individual files for every single app. That's incredibly useful. And it's like a great shortcut if I'm on another device. Another cool thing, uh, you have logs, uh, open in terminal. So that's really cool. Like if you need to do some terminal stuff, you can actually navigate to a folder. Let's say, let's go to a folder that's not gonna be locked down by the new storage stuff. Let's go to uh, Automagic and then let's do open a terminal. So what this will do is pick whichever terminal app of choice and you can actually open that location in the terminal app. You just have to allow Explorer to execute arbitrary commands within Termix environment and access file. So that's a rare permission that certain apps will ask for if you want to extend the functionality and move to another app and do things in the terminal. So we're gonna allow, we're gonna pick Termux and what's going to happen is I'm going to be in that directory in Termux. Now I believe you would have to set up Termux to have access to the internal file storage, but that's another video. Um, so let's go back to the main view for internal storage. Um, so then you can exit from uh, this menu, which is really powerful. Um, because there's a lot of circumstances, like if you're setting up an automation, you might actually need to leave the app and you don't necessarily want to use the gestures. Like here you can see my whole screen is taken up and my, I don't have the gesture navigation buttons. So having an exit button is really powerful for automations. Uh, then we've got skins. You can change every single aspect of this app, like everything. There is a color for the t every single piece of text, every single section of the app, you can change everything. That's incredible. Um, you've got languages. I don't know exactly how that works. I, there's probably something on the website specifically. Uh, add-ons. So there's some add-ons you can get from the Google Play Store for it to handle extra stuff. One of the main add-ons you'll be encountering is the codec add-on, which allows it to play uh, certain types of video or pictures, things that may not be commonly played by most file managers. Uh, that's probably the only add-on you're going to see pop up here. I've installed the other add-ons, but a lot of times they don't pop up here. Uh, but most of the features are already built into the main app, so it's not entirely necessary. Buttons, you can change the layout of the app. You can select which buttons you want, which button, buttons you don't want. So like there's a built-in ebook reader. It looks like you could actually set up a button to shortcut you directly to the ebook reader, which is really powerful. You've got more settings. And then another cool thing about Explorer is the export feature. So if we go back to the main view, I can actually export all of these bookmarks that I've set up as a file. And it'll actually use previous bookmark, I can access previous bookmarks that I've already created and then save it to a specific location. It'll save it as a bookmarks file. And then, so like if we go into to internal storage, we'll just save it there. And then when I open it up in Explorer, I'll have the option to open it with the import activity. Uh, the cool thing about Explorer is I can back up the bookmarks as a file and, no, we don't want to open the terminal. I can back up the skins, any skins that I've created or any skins that came with the app, I can export those as a file. Once again, using any bookmarks I've created and I can export the settings. So any settings that I've changed here or in the rest of the app will automatically be backed up if I do this export. And what's cool is all of these exports are separate. So it's not just like one big file. Your skins are separate from your bookmarks and your bookmarks are separate from your settings. So it's going to be three files you have to keep track of. But what's really cool about that is that if I have like 100 bookmarks set up, which I actually do, and I want to create this video, all I have to do is back up those bookmarks. Uh, 
clear the storage of the app entirely. And if I restore those three files, I will be right back to where I was, skins and all. So once again, that's that's very important if you're like moving devices, if you have multiple devices. Like for me, I have multiple devices and I have a bunch of different bookmarks on each one of those devices because I can instantaneously just back up those bookmarks to a file. Uh, moving between devices is very easy. We have auto tasks here. So these are like automations built into the app. Uh, I believe you can like move files. So we've got copy, replace. So already that puts all kinds of ideas for like what you can do. You can have stuff automatically set up to be in a certain folder. So like for me on one of my devices, I have a folder for all of my assets when making videos. So what I'll do is I'll put all of the files that I want to be copied in one folder. Like say I'm creating thumbnails or graphics or stuff like that, I'll put that in one folder and then I'll have that automatically copy all of those files to the assets folder so that when I make the video and I clear that assets folder, all of those files will be right back where I put them. And when I go to make another video, I'll have everything I need. Um, if we go to components, these are the various features of the app. So I think this right here is like a quick overview of why Mixplorer is probably one of the best file managers, if not the best. Here we've got a archive utility. That means I can deal with zip files. We've got the clipboard. Uh, we've got a code editor, which means I can have syntax highlighting when I'm editing uh, programming files. We've got copy to. Copy to is actually very powerful because it allows you to copy to anything uh, in your internal storage using Mixplorer bookmarks. So this is like system wide. Uh, one of these is it's a copy to activity. We've got an ebook reader, which means I can read PDFs, I can read EPUB, EPUBs. I I don't know if I can read Mobis, but I probably can. We've got the explore activity, which is uh, as we just saw, we were able to look into the individual app files, so that's really powerful. We've got extract to. Once again, I believe this is for archives, so we can actually create archives and we can extract archives. So things like zips. Um, I don't know if we can do seven zips, but even still, just being able to work with zip files very necessary in file management. We've got a font viewer. I have not seen a font viewer in like any of the other file management apps. So that's really cool to see here. We've got a hex viewer. I do a lot of things on Android and I have not yet found a reason to need the hex viewer, which is kind of incredible. Just the fact that that's here, like that's a very niche thing, but they decided to include that. Incredible. We've got an HTML viewer. If you have HTML files directly on the device, you can view them on the device with Mixplorer. Um, I don't know if there's a dark mode for this, but there actually is a dark mode for the ebook reader. That's really cool. We've got an image viewer, really nice image viewer. You can actually set up slideshows in the image viewer. We've got the player. We can play audio files, video files, SQL light editor. So we can edit database files. Like say, uh, since this device is rooted, maybe I want to edit a core database file in order to change some of the functionality for the device. I can do that straight in Explorer. We've got a text editor so I can create uh, text files and then we've got a document provider i'm not entirely sure what document provider is but i think that's for you to open things like word files possibly even open office files so as you can see this app is completely engineered from the ground up to deal with basically anything you throw at it which is why i had to make this video and i intend to make a series because this app in my opinion is the best file management app on android by far i I've looked at other apps. I originally thought I was just being biased, but I know the design doesn't look maybe as pretty as some of the other apps, but the features in this app are, I haven't really seen any competition. But that about wraps up the introduction. I'll be going deeper into the various features of Explorer in later videos, and I hope you'll check it out. Um, the app is currently on the Play Store, and I believe at the time of making this video, it's $5. I'll have a link for you to get to that so you can get it. Actually, I think we can use Nova Launcher to visit the, yeah, there we go. Here's the Google Play Store page, and you can share this app because it is a direct purchase, and I highly recommend you get it. Uh, thanks for sitting with me and checking out Mixplorer.